This week on Behind the Lens, I'm joined by David Tipley. David is one of the world's most widely published wildlife photographers, renowned for his artistic images of birds. His many accolades include the European Nature Photographer of the Year Award in 2002 for his work on emperor penguins, and Nature's Best Indigenous Peoples Award in 2009 for his pictures of Mongolian eagle hunters. In 2018, David's combined book sales topped 300,000 copies worldwide. David writes regularly for various magazines, including Amateur Photographer. In March 2019, David was named an Olympus Mentor. The scheme honours the talents of photographers creating exceptional imagery with Olympus equipment. Being based in Norfolk, David offers photography workshops with his business, Norfolk Photo Safaris, specialising in iconic Norfolk species like hares and barn owls. I put the question to David, what are your three most memorable images? So thanks for joining me, David. We're here in your, your woodland today and a few hundred yards that way, perhaps that's your sparrowhawk hide, is that right? Yes, well, not just sparrowhawk. But, you've got, uh, yeah, you've got lots of birds in there, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, good, good variety of birds. You can expect 20, 25 species of bird normally to come down and drink and bathe and come to have something to eat. Brilliant. But you've picked three of your most memorable images, so presumably that was a, a hard task to do. But what is the first image that you've picked? Uh, the first picture I've picked is one that really transformed my career. So uh, it, I didn't really need to pick this particular picture. It was really the trip that, that, that changed things for me. And uh, the trip came out of adversity. Uh, so it's an image of emperor penguins in a storm down in the Weddell Sea. And back in 1994, I was commissioned to do my first book, which was called Top Birding Spots in Britain and Ireland. And that took me all around the country for a year, uh, researching and taking pictures. And once it was published, uh, I hadn't had my transparencies returned, and I kept on at the publisher. Um, as, as you do. <laughs> as you do. Nothing appeared. Yeah. And eventually it transpired that they had been lost. I won't go in, it's a long story. Okay. But uh, in those days, of course, it was transparency, so uh, there was compensation to be paid. And uh, eventually, after a couple of years, I got a substantial payout. Uh, and it came at a perfect time, really, because I'd gone professional in 1992 and. Uh, yeah, after was, I was born. Sorry, yeah. mate, not to make you feel old, David. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty tough uh, for the first few years. And, you know, I sort of felt like I was on the edge most of the time. So suddenly to have all this money was fantastic. And uh, up to that point, I hadn't really been able to afford to travel very, very far. But the, the money suddenly gave me the opportunity to do things um, that I was always wanted to do. It was an amazing trip. I've not been able to top it since, really. You know, uh, and camping on the sea ice was, uh, wow, well, it's just an incredible experience. But photographically, it, it was just wonderful. And uh, got some, some really great pictures. And then towards the end of air, air time at the colony, uh, we got a warning that there was a storm coming and we had a couple of aircraft on the ice and they were keen to, to, to get them off, off the ice and get off us off the ice. Uh, but the storm came in so rapidly that, that we got stuck there. Um, but that then gave us the opportunity over three days to get to the colony on a couple of occasions in this storm and to get one or two amazing pictures of these birds clustered together in howling wind and. Well, I suppose as a photographer, it's a dream to get pictures that other people, because uh, not that that many people go to Antarctica anyway, but to get pictures that others perhaps can't. So if it's in a storm, it's a little bit unique, really. Yes, um, and when I came back, uh, because not many many photographers had gone down and, and done this before, just two or three, really, uh, the pictures were very valuable at that stage. Uh, they got used very widely, and uh, they still get used quite widely today. Um, and this particular picture has, has been used probably three or four hundred times now. Um, everything from being used in National Geographic to an advert for Walmart winter clothing and, you know, just about everything in between. So, um, yeah, 
and 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 they that set of pictures really set me on the path uh, because once I came back they were generating a lot of income and then I was able to travel more and more um, a vicious circle and yeah <laughs> it, it, it it was what I needed to get going really so what's the second image that you've chosen for us so this second image is a picture that when I first took it I didn't really think anything of at all <laughs> and uh, it was filed away on a hard drive, but it was taken as part of the Birds and People project that I did with Mark Cocker. Um, and we started in started that project in about 2004 and finished in 2012, book was published in 2012, 2013. Um, and it was a fantastic project to do. It was, it was based around the cultural importance of birds to people around the world. And one of those trips was to go to Western Mongolia and photograph the Kazakh eagle hunters. Uh, and I went when they were having their annual eagle hunters festival. <laughs> so this picture, the guy second from left is a guy called Dal Han and I stayed in his camp. And the night before I took this, we had a night of drinking Russian <laughs> vodka. <laughs> I don't remember too much of it. <laughs> well, it why wouldn't great, you? Of course no, you would do it, that. It was a great night. Um, rather foolish, really, because I had to have a clear head the next day because that was the, the key day for photography. I was going to say, it does look a bit out of focus, I David. Had, <laughs> that, must be, that must be why. <laughs> I had a hell of a hangover when I took, took this. But um, the festival starts in a town square uh, and you get about 80 riders on horseback with their eagles. They charge around the square and then they head out two or three miles to a like a, a parade area, like a show, sort of a showground on the step. So once they had gone round the square, um, I got on a motorbike, back of a motorbike, and got out ahead of them, and then stood on the step, and I was photographing the guys racing across the step to the, to the showground. And Dahl was racing along, and then he suddenly spotted me standing, and he stopped, and he waited for these other three to catch him up and then he got them all together and then they rode at me and I got this one single picture but I like to think this wasn't just taken in a five hundredth of a second this was really taken um, over an evening drinking vodka because I, I think <laughs> if I hadn't had that sort of connection with him you know he perhaps wouldn't have been so so the moral so is corporate. drink lots of vodka <laughs> and your photography <laughs> will improve that indeed <laughs> so um, yeah and anyway uh, when when I got back I had thousands of pictures to go through never chose that particular picture it didn't strike me at the time so it's left on a hard drive and then when it came to 2011 when we were looking for a cover for the book uh, we just couldn't couldn't decide on a cover I mean I you know, if you've been involved in with publishers trying to choose covers it's always yeah. a bit of a nightmare everyone yes. has their own opinions marketing yeah. get involved and all the PR people and you never quite you never quite end up with a cover that you want. No, no. Uh, and I was desperately looking for something that they would sort of hang their coat on. And uh, so I started to scour my hard drives because they decided they wanted a person and a bird. Um, I didn't have a huge number of pictures to choose from with that scenario in mind. And anyway, going through a hard drive, and I found, I found this picture and I sent it in to them. And it was unanimous. They all loved it. So uh, that was put on the cover of the book. And, and, and ever since, it's really grown on me. And I've had so many nice comments from people about it. Um, and it's funny how, as a photographer, sometimes you can have potentially a good picture right under your nose. But you, you almost need There's all those treasures to... hiding in photographers' yeah. hard drives. And you just don't know. Maybe yeah. you've overlooked it or something. Yeah, yeah. I suppose one of the interesting things is normally with uh, being both wildlife photographers, we don't work with people very often. No. And sometimes that's a blessing, but sometimes it means when you do work with people, it adds another challenge because you've got to try and capture them with, well, particularly that title of the book, trying to get people and the bird. So what was it look that you got them all? Or was it like, was there one of someone squinting or someone, or was that just the shot that you were? That was the shot. They, yeah, uh, I had three or four other shots in that series and um they were all one was either looking that way or one was had his eyes closed um 
that was the only one that really that, that really worked and I mean that could be a timeless image until you look at the guy on the left who's wearing the Ray-Bans and it just, just makes me smile <laughs> I, think, I think it adds to it yeah, though it's character it isn't it yeah. it's brilliant yeah so it brings it brings it into the modern world as well um, yeah. but uh, that was a great that was a great couple of weeks with those guys so your final image what's so memorable about this one so this one for me um, this was only taken about a year ago but in many ways it Sig it's a sort of the species uh, signifies a change in my life um, moving to Norfolk uh, starting a family and uh, also this was the first decent picture I took with a mirrorless camera so changing from Nikon gear that I had for 30 odd years to Olympus last year quite daunting um, I suppose to kind of go from that to yes although although after a couple of days using the much lighter um, smaller Olympus kit and and the ability to be able to shoot completely silently that that, that that sold it to me immediately really particularly with barn owls that really react to sound so you know if you're photographing a barn owl with with what I consider now to be noisy DSLRs uh, they really react so they might be flying towards you but once they start hearing the click really they're that sensitive they'll, they'll they, they normally can... veer off yeah right. so uh this standing in the hedgerow waiting for this bird or at least it was hunting in a meadow in front of me started to head straight towards me and i got loads and loads of pictures of it and it never veered off at all until right at the last minute when it actually saw me and that this is a picture just as it's veering off this was taken uh, right at the end of the day, just the, the last the last light of the day. And I think as a photographer, you're always dreaming about capturing that moment, you know, where you've got that last beautiful light of the day. You, you know, you, you, you visualize your subject with just the sort of little bit of light bouncing off it and um, creating that more of an atmosphere to the picture. And, um, uh, and 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 it happens so um, it's one of those pictures where you, you know perhaps if you're a footballer it'd be like scoring the winning goal in a World <laughs> Cup final in extra time or something <laughs> it's uh, it's that it's that sort of special moment that that picture in particular was a bit of a turning point because I realized that yes the mirrorless would be able to to do the job so David what have you got coming up so these days I do a lot of guiding. I run a company called Norfolk Photo Safaris um, and we take people out to enable them to photograph the wonderful wildlife we've got in North Norfolk and things like barn owls, hares. Uh, I bring them here to my wood where we've got a nice pool in front of the hide. Uh, so there's lots of, yeah, there's lots of really nice opportunities. Well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Some fantastic images. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for watching and why not check out our other interviews here. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest content. Until next time, cheers.